Hey everyone. So in the previous video, we talked about the chemical reactions in organic chemistry, which included substitution, addition, and elimination. Then we talked about the types of bond breaking, which initiates obviously different chemical reactions. The first was the homolytic bond fission, where two atoms break their bond in a way that both atoms receive one unpaired electron and neither of the atom is gaining the whole electron pair. In this way we get two free radicals which have an unpaired electron so they are represented with a dot. Another category was the heterolytic bond fission where the bond was breaking in a way that one atom receives the entire bond pair while the another atom receives no electron from the bond pair. It's kind of an unequal bond breaking process. In today's video, we'll continue with this concept and we'll build up on the concept of free radical substitution reaction. Now, using the previous video concepts, we know what a free radical is and we also know what a substitution is. Free radical substitution happens in alkanes. So this happens in alkanes with halogens. The overall reaction that we'll talk about in our today's video is going to be methane molecule which is CH4 just like we used in the last video's example reacting with a chlorine molecule Let's highlight both chlorines again with two different colors, green and yellow. And then the product is going to be same kind of methane carbon, but this time instead of bonding with four hydrogens, it's bonded with three hydrogens and one of the chlorine replaces the hydrogen. What happens to the gone hydrogen? It makes a bond with a chlorine atom. So you get hydrogen chloride and chloromethane. You had methane in the beginning, you had chlorine in the beginning, now you get chloromethane and you get hydrogen chloride gas. Why is it called free radical substitution? Because there is a kind of homolytic fission involved in the very first step. This whole process breaks down into three steps. Initiation, initiation, then there is a propagation, propagation, and then there is a termination step. So let's talk about the initiation step that begins with the chlorine. So let's talk about the initiation process, which is step number one. Initiation step or initiation process means that the reaction is starting right now. This involves a homolytic bond fission. Remember in our last example, we were using halogen as an example. So there was two chlorine atoms in the beginning chlorine, chlorine, they had their bond pair which is a dot and a cross. This is the bond pair here which involves one electron from both atoms. One chlorine atom has the lone pairs around it, the other has its own lone pairs around it. When a UV light photon, when a photon of a UV light, UV light photon collides with the molecule it provides enough energy to break the bond so the bond breaks down in a way that both atoms receive their own electron and neither of them is receiving the whole pair both are receiving only one electron so they both get separated in a way first chlorine gets its own electron including the lone pairs, but there's one unpaired electron. The other also receives its own lone pairs, which were its own, but now the unpaired electron, the bond has been broken down. Simply, we can write it like this. 
that sorry why I'm writing H both Cl had their own electrons like this the crosses one receives its own electron the other receives its own electron these are half headed arrows and they both become free radicals the free radicals are made in the initiation step and these free radicals are highly reactive species they go in the second step and start attacking on something else but before we go let's write the definition of the initiation step where a molecule breaks the bond in a homolytic manner a molecule breaks the bond in a homolytic manner to produce two free radicals you are receiving two free radicals from a simple uncharged molecule so now we have the chlorine free radicals we can move to the next step which is known as propagation remember those radicals weren't really stable right they want to gain stability by making new bonds so this chlorine radical is like I want to make a bond so it starts finding stable molecules around it to obtain any atom from them for example methane was nearby with its own four hydrogen and bond pairs the chlorine radical moves towards it and tries to obtain hydrogen to make the bond let's zoom in and let's notice that the bond between hydrogen and carbon can be broken down in the exact same way like chlorine we don't need any UV light here because the chlorine radical is also already very unstable and it's going to help in breaking this bond so the hydrogen and carbon bond is going to break down once this bond breaks down the remaining molecule which is this carbon these three hydrogens will remain as a radical so what happens is that chlorine makes a bond with hydrogen which is the HCl while the carbon becomes a radical so you will get a methyl radical which looks like this CH3 radical the dot on the carbon means the unpaired electron after the homolytic fission this is this entire structure now what happens is that the methyl radical feels the same way so methyl radical is going to be like I'm gonna gain stability by breaking some other bond so methyl radical the CH3 radical can find another chlorine molecule here this time we don't need UV light because the methyl radical has enough energy enough instability to break the chlorine chlorine bond so the chlorine chlorine bond will break down in a way one of the chlorine atoms will make a bond with the methyl so methyl makes a bond with the chlorine and makes CH3 Cl what happens to the remaining portion it becomes a radical so you get another chlorine radical here this way the reaction keeps on going on now next step is really tricky the chlorine radical that has been recently made it can find two different molecules here the chlorine radical that has been recently made either it can find a new methane molecule either it will find a new unattacked methane molecule and it will perform a similar method it will make HCl for itself by grabbing one of the hydrogens and the methyl radical will be generated it will be a new methyl radical or another possibility is that our chlorine radical will attack on the same reactant 
remember the same reactant was C H 3 C L this methyl radical would be like I want to grab a hydrogen so hydrogen and carbon bond will break down exactly in the homolytic manner this time the remaining molecule is not methyl rather it's a chloromethyl so this time the product would be HCl plus CH2Cl radical so both possibilities are there because in the same container you will have new methane molecules also and you will also have the CH3Cl which was recently made what's the point of this the point is a radical attacks on a molecule to make another radical and that is the whole idea of propagation steps you can see that chlorine radical started reaction 1 but ended up producing methyl radical in the next reaction methyl radical started the reaction but you got a new chlorine radical by the end of the reaction the chlorine radical that was made it was either producing a new methyl radical or it was producing a very new kind of chloromethyl radical which is again very much possible to be made so they will all be in the same container and you should know that for any propagation step a radical starts the reaction with a simple molecule like let's call it AB and another radical will be made while X will gain stability for itself so one radical one radical starts the reaction but another radical another radical is produced the final step is termination the final step is termination in termination two radicals combine whichever two radicals and then the reaction stops because those two radicals combine with each other and they both gain stability let's go back to find various radicals in the container the first radical in the container was chlorine radical so it's very much possible that one chlorine radical will randomly combine with another chlorine radical because they will collide with each other they will hit each other and they will make a simple chlorine molecule Cl2 another possibility is the chlorine radical hits and collides with the methyl radical very much possible so what will you get in this scenario if a chlorine radical attacks the methyl radical both were unstable but they both will become stable by making CH3Cl which is chloromethane chloromethane any other possibility very much possible that the methyl radical from this reaction will combine with another methyl radical within the same container because you know the container doesn't have only few molecules it has a freakishly big number of molecules so one methyl radical could combine with another methyl radical and they both will gain stability by combining with each other both the carbons will combine with each other alongside their hydrogens that is known as C2H6 you might ask what is C2H6 now that is ethane so it's very much possible that you will get ethane from methane's free radical substitution do we have any other possibility yes we do let's go back and see we also had a very new kind of radical which was CH2 Cl chloromethyl radical what if my methyl radical hits and collides with the chloromethyl radical out of the blue 
So that is a possibility where a methyl radical combines with a chloromethyl radical CH2Cl. What do they make? The carbons will combine alongside their CH3 and the other one has CH2Cl. Let's count the formula. C2, how many H's? 5 H's. C2, H5, Cl. Now that is what? That is chloromethane. Sorry, chloroethane. Chloroethane. So you can also get chloroethane starting from methane. Do we have any other possibility? We do. What if two of these radicals collide with each other and you get something new out of it? What if one chloromethyl radical attacks with another chloromethyl radical? You will get two C's combining both with their CH2Cl's and what will you get? You will get C2, H4 because there are four H's in total and Cl2. What's the name of this compound? The name of this compound will be 1, 2, dichloroethane. It's very important by the way because both carbons have one chlorine each because when they both combine the yellow carbon of radical number one will combine with the green carbon of the radical number two. So both carbons will make a bigger molecule with their own chlorines and their own hydrogens. So the termination step means two radicals combine to make a stable molecule So I hope that the idea of free radical substitution is clear for us, which included initiation, the homolytic fission of the chlorine bond, propagation, where one radical attacks on a molecule to make a new radical, termination, where all random radicals can bump into each other to make stable but very unique molecules. So in the next class, we'll be doing some past papers from free radical substitution. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks.